Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. There are some uh, hot spots on this planet where war can uh, very easily uh, break out. And uh, one of them is between um, Turkey and uh, Greece. Now that's been hot for some time but it's got, has gotten uh, hotter in the past few months with some um, issues in the Mediterranean Sea with some armament coming from United States or not coming from United States, it depends uh, who's who and what's what. Uh, diplomatic support for uh, Athens, uh, not dis diplomatic support for Ankara, Turkey. So let's see um, what's the new development here. And the development is a threat actually, and it's um, pursued by Turkey. This article comes from Sputnik and it's from today, the 21st of October, 2022. Erdogan, yeah, that guy with big balls, says Turkey sends message with test of Typhoon short-range ballistic missile. So I wonder who uh, is he sending the message to? <laughs> Can you guess? Yeah, uh, Turkey is sending the message to uh, Greece, obviously, right? Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Friday called the test of a homemade Typhoon ballistic missile, a message. So let's see the typhoon. On Tuesday, Bloomberg reported citing people familiar with the matter that Turkey secretly conducted tests of a domestically produced short range ballistic missile over the Black Sea. Hmm. The missile called Typhoon was launched from a platform near the port city of Rize, flew 561 kilometers which is 350 miles, and fell near the port of Sinop. And I'm quoting, oh, that's a lot actually, 561 kilometers, 350 miles. That's more than uh, supposedly Ukraine has. I think they have longer than that, but they are not allowed by the masters to use them. And I'm quoting Mr. Erdogan, now we have typhoon and it is a message. And quote, Erdogan said at a black blockchain summit organized by the Istanbul University. For years, Turkey has been actively building up its military power by developing its own industry products, producing famous Bayraktar TB2 drones and by cooperating with world's leading weapons manufacturers, including US and Russia, while also strengthening its rhetoric against rival, regional rivals. Um, why don't you call it as it is? <laughs> regional. Uh, I don't think they're going to use, we, they need to use that against the Kurds, uh, even though they uh, might want to hit them in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, but they have a problem with the Kurds in northern Syria. The issue over there, the little drawback, is that uh, those guys are trained and protected and supported by the US military, their allies, NATO allies, remember? So they got in certain kind of uh, uh, scuffles, not uh, deadly, but uh, there were some incidents where the US army came face to face with uh, the Turkish army and they were uh, growling at one another without uh, either shooting at one another yet. As I always say, accidents happen, especially in this kind of circumstances. But having your own ballistic missile of your own production, it depends how many foreign, uh, uh, you know, things are used to, uh, you know, uh, to build it. Because if you, everything you need to build it is made in, uh, let's say, uh, Greece, <laughs> then why would you have your ballistic missile? So I hope all the components of the ballistic, the ballistic missile are uh, made in Turkey as well or at least, uh, I don't even know how to put it mildly, uh, allied friendly countries, but in the, this kind of environment, uh, friendship could turn into enemy and foe, uh, foe ship <laughs> in a second. You know, because uh, you have a lot of masters and it's a lot of interests and a lot of, uh, how do you call it, uh, issues unresolved that uh, circumstance can produce a war and I think uh, Greece and Turkey are just there, just there to uh, to uh, I don't know to have an um, armed 
incidents somewhere in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, well, as I said, Erdogan is, has both, it shows by his economic decision, decisions, financial decisions, military alliances, uh, they seem to be like free country, Turkey at least. Well, it has uh, inflation 80%, but it seem, seems like um, it's, um, I don't want to say under control because it's 80% anyway, but it pursues, uh, pursues a um, independent foreign policy at least. Try to mediate the Ukraine-Russia uh, war, upsets European Union and NATO whenever those guys don't do what they want. They uh, uh, obviously are the guys who have the, supposedly, have the power to bar um, Finland and uh, Sweden from becoming members of NATO, even though I am almost, almost certain that if uh, Turkey, let's say Turkey stands its ground and say, no, 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 you didn't do what we asked you to do to solve this problem, uh, this uh, requirement will be bypassed by uh, the, the big boss. The big boss will show up in a room and say, okay, cut the crap. We're not going to have, we don't have to have unanimity here anymore. We're going to have a majority here anymore for countries joining. Or we have to have, I know, a 95% uh, agreement. That means Turkey, boom, out. That's what I did with, uh, with European Union. Remember, Mario Draghi, the former prime minister of Italy, said, uh, regarding uh, sanctions against Russia, the economic sanctions, and uh, <clears throat> when that happened in the European Union, uh, the, all the countries have to have a consensus, so 100%, and if they don't have it, the sanctions will not uh, get into effect. And if you remember, it was uh, Hungary who opposed some certain um, sanctions on Russian energy, and Mario Draghi said, well, we got to change this. we got to make it a, a, a uh, majority versus a unanimity, 100%. Really? So you change the, the things because it doesn't go the way you want it. That's fantastic. That's like a child uh, in the kindergarten. There are some set rules and he's losing. Then he's going to change the rules so he can win. Uh, anyway, Mario Draghi. Mario Draghi, that's talk that he might become uh, the chief of NATO, kicking... Uh, uh, Stoltenberg in his little balls, cling, 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 cling. Uh, but uh, I don't know, he was uh, a big shot in the banking system, financial system, European financial system, Draghi, before he, before he became um, Prime Minister of Italy. So he's very, very, very well connected and he was a yes sir guy. So now he just said, I'm out of this Italy thing because I'm going to lose anyway, because those guys are about to win. So instead of saying I lost, I just quit and is going to be promoted somewhere else where his services will be used as they were in Italy, but probably with more authority and more uh, determination. I mean, cling, cling, cling. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.